Our footlights shine their brightest now as the curtain rises on Act One of Dark Victory, starring Betty Davis as Judith Traherne and Spencer Tracy as Dr. Frederick Steele. At Miss Judith Traherne's estate on Long Island, another all-night party has run its course. It's just six o'clock in the morning as the last car swerves through the gate and the phone begins to jangle wildly. First in one room, then another, from the servants' quarters to the kitchen, and then at last in the bedroom of Mr. Hearn's secretary and companion. Hello, Mr. Hearn's secretary speaking. Well, good morning, Miss Hearn. It's a cheerful day now, isn't it? Who is this? This is Michael over at the stable. Michael, what do you mean by calling at this hour? <laughs> I was wondering if I might speak to Miss Judith. You certainly might not. You know there was a party here. She hasn't had an hour's rest. And who is it? Not important. You better go back to sleep. Now, don't argue, Doc. Hello? This is Miss Judith Traherne of the Sleepy Traherne. Is it now? Well, this is Mr. Michael O'Leary of the Wide Awake O'Leary's. We've got a customer for that cold of yours. He's down at the stable now. We can get 10,000 if we snatch it quick. If you mean challenger, Michael, not 10 and not 20. My head's just woozy, not vacant. If you don't mind my saying so, Miss Traherne, it might be a good idea for you to take charge of the cups and ribbons and leave the handling of the horses to me. I do mind your saying so. You had your orders last night. I ought to slap that man's face. Michael's impregnant sometimes, but he's just about the best trainer money can buy. Help me up, Dolly. I'm going down to the stable. Will you, please? Ooh. Oh, you know, I, I'm absolutely giddy. Look at me. What is it? Another headache? Mm. A hangover you could hang your hat on. Oh, from what? You didn't touch a drop last night. Oh, I did so, gallant. No, you didn't. I watched you. As fast as you were handed cocktails, you slipped them into the flower bowls. It was your petunias that got tight, not you. Well, why can't I walk straight then? You're silly if you don't believe me. Judith, I don't like the way... I'm going to send for Dr. Parsons. No. Why not, Judith? Now, listen, I'll be all right in a minute. Be a darling, Anne. Get my things, will you? And tell John to bring up the car. Tell him to... I don't know what Michael got me down here for, Judith. But he said you wanted to sell that Colt. Well, I don't, Colonel Mantle. I still think you should buy him, Colonel. Michael, shut up. That Colt's a perfect darling. He could play on the lawn with the dogs or the children. Of course, unfortunately, a steeplechaser has to have go. Catch this fellow at the two-mile pole with his heart bursting and a water jump ahead, and he'll fold up on you. Michael, I said I wanted to run him this morning. Where is he? He's in his stall having his extra 40 winks before we give him his morning cup of tea. Get him out here. And when I tell you to do something, you do it. Yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. Well, I'm sorry, Judith. I'd like to make a deal. Oh, don't I... go away, Colonel. I want to take him over the jump. Judith, is it your head again? <sighs> it comes and goes. And I'll show him if that horse has courage. Here's your fine horse, Miss Judith. Shall I give you a hand up? Up you go. Thanks. Michael, how long have I had you? One month and three days. Remind me to think about firing you. Oh, you'll not be firing me, Miss Judith. We're going to get on together. Just because I call your darling a coward. Someday you'll learn, Michael, that courage is in the blood. When any of us hits that last hurdle, it's all that counts. Sure, sure, and I'll take your little horse and go along. <laughs> Michael, she's not going to take the high jump, is she? Looks like it. But she's leading him in wrong. Stay over to your left, Miss Judith. Oh! Where? Oh, I thought she was going to fall. She will if she comes around like that again. Miss Judith! You're way off to the right. Come in straight for that jump. Who's riding this horse? What's the matter with her? Miss Judith, straighten out. You'll trace the wings. Look out. Look out. It's a gash on the head. But it was you we were worried about. Michael said he had a hunch he'd throw you. And, and listen to me. That uh, coat didn't throw me. I threw him. What do you mean? You know what happened? I saw two jumps. I tried to put him over the wrong one. You saw two jumps? Yes, that was it. It was the ghastliest feeling. Everything went fuzzy. Why didn't you tell that to Dr. Parsons? Oh, poor old Bethabel Parsons. My dear, you're staying up too late, smoking too many cigarettes. <laughs> if only he knew about last week at the colony, when the old lady was coming out of the swing doors and knocked the umbrella out of her hand. Why? Somebody said I was drunk. <laughs> and another time coming out of Helene's on Park Avenue, I ran right into a woman with her dog on a leash. I ran right into the leash. Judith, you... Oh, I didn't hurt the dog, but the woman was furious. <laughs> Darling... Darling, confidentially, this is more than a hangover. But if you don't tell Parsons these things, I will. Ah, no, you won't, Anne. You're my truest and best friend, and you won't tell a soul. I, uh, I wouldn't have told you, except that I won't have a dumb animal blamed for my mistake. Come on now, we're going to town, aren't we? Judith, Parsons is coming back. Why? I promised we'd go with him to a specialist about this giddy. I haven't time for doctors. But you may be really ill. But I haven't time to be ill. 
Come in. Dr. Parsons is here, Miss Judith. Oh, oh. Well, Judith, are we ready to go? No, Dr. Darling, we're not. She says she's not going with you. But Judith, I, I think you ought to. There's a man in town, Dr. Steele. Now, Dr. Darling, I've got much too much to do. You know that. You take Anne to Dr. Steele. <laughs> she could use an examination. <laughs> oh, Anne, haven't you any influence over her? None at all. Oh! What was that? Oh! Martha, oh! what's the matter? Miss Judith! Miss Judith! He fell down the No, I can't hear you. Yes, this is Dr. Steele's nurse. No, I'm afraid it'd be useless. Dr. Steele has closed his office. Permanently, yes. No, he's not coming back. You're welcome. Goodbye. Sounds good, eh, Winred? If you want to hear a fine woman break down and sob, Dr. Steele, just keep talking like that. <laughs> Have to leave in 45 minutes. Remember that now. Well, what about this case of Dr. Parsons? He's very worried. Told me to keep you here by force if necessary. You tell old Parsons I've waited nine years for this train. I'm not going to miss it just because some Long Island glamour girl fell off her horse. Dr. Steele. Yeah? I wouldn't talk so loud. They're outside now. Who? Dr. Parsons and his patient. Wainwright. Well, I'm sorry, doctor, but he insisted. All right. Have to be polite, I suppose. Will you come in, Dr. Parsons? Hey. Sit down, Dr. Parsons. Don't forget about that train, Wainwright. I won't. Steele, can't you put off leaving? I'm sorry, Parsons. I've closed my office. But why? I've told you. I'm through with private practice. You're going into research, is that it? That's it. I want to work on cells, brain cells. I want to find out why healthy cells suddenly go berserk, grow wild. Do you feel you can do as much for people that way as you have done in surgery? Yeah. More, if I have any luck. Why? Because... I have a patient who needs you, Steele. But, uh, please. I... The girl is desperately ill. She's been losing ground every day. I read your report. Well, if two minutes of talk will do any good, go ahead. What's this about headaches? She's been having them persistently, even before the accident. Before? She calls them hangovers. Ah. And you wait until now? <laughs> you don't know that girl. She's stubborn. Only yesterday she went to a revival of Serrano in the afternoon and played bridge half the night. She won't cooperate. She won't even tell me anything. Mm -hmm. By the way, if she's such a crack horsewoman, why was she thrown? It was a, a queer sort of accident. She steered her horse into the right wing of a jump. What's that? You sure it was the right? Yes. Why? Ah, no. Well, I, uh, I think your best bet is to get in touch with Finley. Oh, Finley is in Europe. Well, I get Park. I don't want Park or any of the rest of them. Hang it all, they're no better than I am. I want you. But Parsons, if I start... You. You're always talking about the obligation of doctors to humanity. Well, there's humanity waiting for you in that room. Oh, all right. Have her come in. Thank you. Judith, come in. Judith, this is Dr. Steele. How do you do? My name's Traherne. Judith Traherne. I don't names matter. What's that? I mean to the cold scientific eye. We're guinea pigs, aren't we? Glad to have met you, doctor. Wait a minute. How'd you get those burns on your hand? Where? On your right hand, right here, between the first two fingers. Well, I, uh, I never noticed until now. Oh, I see. No. Well, wait outside, Judith. Won't you sit here? I haven't much time. Neither have I. Parsons tells me you're a great hunter. Well, you could hardly expect me to enter your office leading a pack of hounds. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> uh, I understand you don't like to talk about your health. I don't. Any reason why? It's a boring topic, that's all. Most people love it. I make my living by listening to them. Then I'm afraid you're wasting your time. Oh, I'll send you a bill. I'm 23 years old, an only child. I weigh 115 pounds, stripped. I've had mumps, measles, and whooping cough, all at the proper ages. I take a great deal of exercise. I'm accustomed to a reasonable quantity of tobacco and alcohol. I'm said to have a sense of humor. Is that all? That's all the inconsequential facts. What are the consequential ones? Does that light from the window bother you? No. Use your eyes a great deal? I generally keep them open, doctor. <laughs> What on earth do you do to yourself down there on Long Island? Oh, horses, dogs, shooting, yachting, parties, travel, gossip. All the pleasures of the station wagon crowd. You don't think much of that, do you? No, not much. Why not? Well, it just doesn't appeal to me. Do you condemn everything that doesn't appeal to you, Dr. Steele? Oh, no, 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 by no means. You asked for my opinion and I gave it. Well, anyway, that's my racket. What's yours? <laughs> well, I've been a surgeon up to now. But I'm clearing out for northern Vermont in about 30 minutes. Vermont? Not really. Mm-hmm. No kidding. Uh, what are you going to do up there between yawns? 
You wouldn't be interested. Oh, come now, after leading me on like this. Well, I'm going to do scientific research on the growth of cells. In guinea pigs? No, no, just cells. Sounds silly. Yeah, so I'm told. Still, you know, you know, I almost envy you. It must be nice to believe in what you're doing. Why, don't you? Oh, not in the way you do. I'm not complaining. Take it all in all, they dealt me a very good hand. I'm young, I have no particular responsibilities. I shan't cultivate them either, once free or without. Oh, I shall probably marry someday. No hurry about that. When I do, I shall build a house on a ridge I know, the glorious view. I'll have my horses, and with luck, I'll have about 40 years of it. I think that's a pretty good setup. That light is in your eyes. Oh, I wish you wouldn't keep hopping on that. There's nothing the matter with my eyes. You're squinting. I'm not squinting.